Hey guys. That lipstick might be a little orange on screen, but I like it. I like it in person. Um, we are going to discuss the very last issue that we're getting. Yeah, it's not really orange. It's not red either. Um, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm more than a little bit disappointed. The girl didn't take the, um, stand. Anyway. <coughs> yeah, I canceled my subscription. Um, and... I do want to get that thumb drive with all of the issues from 2000 to 2023. <laughs> so, um, but I have to wait because it's out of stock. Not a surprise. Okay. first thing we're going to talk about <clears throat> is census search tips. <clears throat> if you're having trouble finding a person, search other people you think live in the same household, search neighbors, and then look around the neighbors. Um, be flexible with age, but also with name spelling. Um, which we'll get to, because ages might be off, you know. Okay, expect to see changes in details. First off, sometimes someone, i.e. a neighbor, someone else, i.e. a neighbor, did the census. And so, some things may be off. Now... In 1990, our neighbor slash landlady did our census. So it's going to be all kinds of wrong. Because she's going to say we all were born in Massachusetts, which we weren't. Only I was. Um, don't know if she get the ages right. Um, so, and that happened. They would take it from neighbors. Um... B. Census takers are human. Humans are infallible. Or not infallible. Uh, humans are fallible. <laughs> humans make mistakes. Whether it's hearing a name incorrectly because of an accent or whatever the case may be, And they didn't have the same education back then in the early censuses as they did going toward 30, 40, and, well, even in 30, really. Maybe even up until 1950. They didn't have, and they still don't hire, you know, well-educated people because... <laughs> they don't have time to do it, you know? Um, they spell by sound the best that they can and listen to accents of all different varieties, especially, like I said, back in the early days up until, well, even now, really, um, they have accents. You know, people have accents, whether it's my Irish family and their brogue, or it's your Italian family, or your Polish family, or my French family. <laughs> so, and also keep in mind, if you do have French, 
that if you're looking everywhere for Bovair or Boisvert, if you want to say it the way it looks, B-O-I-S-V-E-R-T, <coughs> which is actually pronounced Bovair, not Boisvert, it's Bovair. Um, look for Greenwood, because that's the English translation. If your family is Coudemarche from Canada, which is the French name, Coudemarche, Coudemarche, look up short sleeves. So it's just a clue because sometimes they would um, use their, the English translation. Um, in German, the name Schmidt is Smith in English. So you might, especially, I would say, during the 1950 census in particular. Well, no, anything after World War I, really. So you're talking 20, 30, 40, and 50. Um, look for Smith, because they might have changed it so they wouldn't be recognized as German. Um... So those are just, and there are apparently some good reconstructions of the 1890 census. The 1890 census, if you're not familiar with genealogy, is the bane of every genealogist's existence. Because between 1933 and 1935, it burnt. Only a couple of states survived. Not any of mine, fortunately. Um, and it's a pain. Because it's a stumbling block for a lot of people, including me. <laughs> so, <coughs> um, the next uh, oh, and also. Transcribers are human. Mistakes happen. You know, what you see in writing on the census, someone had to unscramble and transcribe into the result. Then you can click and look at the picture. I always recommend looking at the image of the census because I've seen some pretty crazy things. <laughs> Some, I don't know how the transcriber messed up, because it was very obvious, you know. Uh, but if it's really bad handwriting, which some censuses were, depending on the census taker in the area, um, <coughs> they... Um, might not have had the best handwriting or were writing very quickly so their handwriting was a disaster and um, the transcribers when they go back all these years later all these decades later some case millennia later um, to transcribe it they might make a mistake they're human you know give them a break so um, the next thing is the state pullouts for the month. Could not be more divergent states. <coughs> I had to, I got a good chuckle out of it. It's Oklahoma and Maryland. They're halfway across the country from each other, first off. Secondly, Oklahoma is a predominantly Native American, um, place. Um, <coughs> boomer sooner, you know. Uh, Maryland, <laughs> on the other hand, is a very typical northeastern state. 
um, with a fair amount of crime, drugs. Unfortunately, that's that's the Northeast. Um, it's not a terribly rich state. I mean, there are areas like right outside of Washington and whatnot on the Washington Virginia border that have a little more money where the politicians might live. But overall, not a very rich state. I mean, neither is Oklahoma. It's all native. But, um, although they have more money now because they open casinos and stuff, <coughs> and they don't owe us taxes. <laughs> and that's a good thing. You know, usually, like, Puerto Rico should be paying taxes. I'm sorry. We give them Social Security benefits. We give them all kinds of other benefits. They should be paying taxes. My mother used to say that, too. In the case of the Native Americans, absolutely not. We stole everything from them. We have no business charging them taxes. So. <clears throat> um, but like I said, Maryland's a typical northeastern state. I don't know a ton about Maryland. I mean, there are good areas and bad areas of every single state. <clears throat> I just know that Maryland, from watching Treasure Hunting with Jeebus and all the units he's bought in Maryland, is riddled with drugs. <laughs> um, and it's not particularly wealthy. Whereas in Virginia, there are some very wealthy places. So, that's the divergence between, and not only that, Maryland, I think, has a more, like in cities like Baltimore, I think it, it's more diverse um, culturally. <laughs> so, although it still is in the Northeast, so it's predominantly white. But, um, yeah. So I just, I got a chuckle out of that because it's so different. Um, you know, there's a lot of information in here about the census, about different, um, different things, you know, and, you know, what you can find on each one and where to find them. <coughs> <coughs> different um, abbreviations and stuff. What I'd like to be able to do is scan this every page, turn it into a PDF and put it in the links. I may have to do that another day. I don't know how long it's going to take. Um, but that's what I would like to do to make things easier for you guys. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is family search. Um, I have found this particular one very helpful for me. And that is to, to go to the family search catalog and look at all of the collections and click on a collection a specific collection to search and family search labs that was an interesting one um, because they have stuff in beta testing including full um, like a full statement search if you want to do a full search on every word in what you wrote stuff like that um, the Sanborn maps, we talked about that a little bit in um, the overview video, and I want to leave a link again. I left a link to that before. Um, the Archives and Library of Canada, I will link this as well. Um, they have it's library-archives.canada.ca forward slash ENG for English. They have, you click on the genealogy collections. They have BMD, which is birth, marriage, and death. 
census, and research guides and other resources. Now, the census in Canada runs the same way the census does in the United Kingdom. And that is like us every 10 years. However, ours are on the zero years. So 1790, uh, 1800, 1810, and so on and so forth. Theirs run, I don't think they're, theirs is as early as ours, but I could be wrong. Um, um, instead of running like 1900, 1910, that sort of thing, it would be 1901, 1911, 1921, 1931, 1941, that kind of thing. Now, I don't know how frequently their censuses are released. <coughs> so I don't know if they're up to 1951 yet. Um, they're all different. Ours are released every 10 years, which is 72 years after that particular census. It's for privacy. It is. Um, but most people are still alive when their first census pops up. My parents should have been. <coughs> well, my father should have been. Because it came, my mother died in December, and, and my father's first census came up in April. So, <coughs> my mother's first census will be 1960, which will be <laughs> I'll be 60 years old. But mine is 1980. I was six years old. So, I'll be 86. No, I won't be. That's not 80 years. Oh my god. I was 6 plus 72. I'll be 78. <laughs> so I should see it. You know, I want to see it. Um, the last section that we're going to talk about and I will leave the link for the Library Archives of Canada. Because um, many of us, particularly here in the Northeast, have heavy connections to Canada. The last section we're going to talk about is genealogy supplies. These are things I think I'm going to pick up, at least some of them. Genealogy forms, which I have tons of. And you can create your own forms. My mother was great at that. If we needed a form for something we didn't have, my mother would create one and print a bunch. Save the form in her computer. So, a magnifier, which I already own, <laughs> because, yeah. <laughs> I may get a page magnifier, though. I used to have one of those, but uh, it was just, like, all scratched up. Um, what they call a micro spatula. It's a little spatula thing that helps you separate pictures from each other and other things, other paper things that, you know, ephemera that you don't want to tear to shreds. <laughs> um, a photo pencil. This is a pencil made to write on pictures. So I'm definitely going to look into both of those. I can't really use QR code stickers. What they are is, it's a QR code that takes you to an explanation of the object, which would be amazing in the, <coughs> in the museum, actually. If people could just click their phone on an object, you know, or on a QR code underneath an object, because um, we wouldn't want to put them on our delicate objects, but... Um, and just come up with a, it would just take you to an explanation. Um, it's something I want to talk to the board about because it might be helpful to us, but I can't really use it in my genealogy 
for the most part. I mean, I do have some ephemera I could use it for. Um, but other than that, hold on a second, guys. The battery was dying. Um, I was talking about QR code stickers. Like I said, I do have some ephemera I could do it with. I would have to research more into cost, how you go about setting up the description so the person can scan it, because um, that could really be helpful to us at the museum. But like I said, not so helpful. And it makes the museum a little more interactive um, for people. So I definitely want to put that in my notes for next month. Um, but anyway, like I said, I'm not sure for me if it would work out um, for genealogy because I don't have, I mean, I can't put a QR code on a necklace, you know? Um, I suppose I could put it on the bow of my grandfather's glasses, you know, maybe on the back of one of the cards from his funeral. I have... Like I said, I have some ephemera, <clears throat> some papers that I could definitely slap one on the back of, but I'll look into it, um, and I will get back to you on it. And this I'd never heard of either, tinted reading sheets. They're like clear yellow sheets that bring old records, like um, census records and stuff like that, into focus better. So I'm definitely going to look into that as well. Um, ow. <laughs> so yeah, that's some things that are important. I will keep you updated on what I find. I want to work on this. I got plenty of time, it looks like, so I will work on this. I will scan it in and figure out how to turn it into a PDF. <laughs> and I'll put the link to the PDF, which I will put in um, like Google pages um, that they have a Google document so that um, <coughs> everybody can read it. So now I don't know if I'll get in trouble for that, but actually I don't think I can do that because I think technically it's copyrighted. Yeah, it's copyrighted. I can't do that. <laughs> um, so. I'll try to find some kind of link for census tips. Um, what I am going to do over time <clears throat> is I'm going to create my own PDF of links, tips, All stuff that we've gone over here, so you don't have to watch every single genealogy video if you do not want to. So. Um. Anyway. Thank you. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And I'll see you tomorrow. We're going to bake chocolate chocolate chip muffins tomorrow. Bye, guys.